So I'd like to start talking about our second chapter of matrices. And we're going to start with the inverse matrix. Now the inverse matrix is a very important concept. So the inverse matrix, or you know, the matrix A to the negative one, that's how we know we talk about it. When you multiply matrix A by its inverse A to the negative one, you get the identity matrix I. Do you remember what identity matrix is? It is a square matrix where the leading diagonal has all ones and the rest are zeros. Okay, it's a square matrix. Uh, here I've chosen to do a three by three. So in, in other words, what you're doing is undoing the effect of a matrix. Okay, so A times by X inverse will give you the identity matrix. Also, the inverse times by the original matrix will also give you that identity matrix. So no matter way you do it, you'll end up with an identity matrix. And remember when we were talking about identity matrices, it was like, you know, if you time something by one, okay? And if you times, if you times a, a matrix, um, let's use another, if you times matrix B by an identity matrix, you just end up with matrix B, okay? So with this bit of knowledge that times in A by X inverse gives you the identity matrix, we can know that matrix A times by matrix B equals that if matrix A times by matrix B equals the identity matrix, then one of them is the inverse. Okay, then B is the inverse of A. Okay, now only square matrices have an inverse, but not all square matrices have an inverse. Okay, so only a square matrix can have an inverse, but not all of them do. All right, so we need to first off test whether or not a matrix has an inverse. And how do we do this? We use something called the determinant. Now, we are going to find the determinant by hand for a two by two matrix. Anything bigger than a two by two, we're just going to use our calculator. Same with the inverse, finding an inverse. We can find it for a two by two. Anything bigger than that, we're just going to use our calculator. But you need to be, under, be able to understand how to do this by hand. It's, it's a very quick process. But yeah, we use, we find the determinant. So if, again, if I have matrix A and we're just looking at a two by two, so if I label those elements A, B, C, D, the determinant of A is given by AD minus BC, so A times D minus B times C. And if it's zero, then the matrix is what we call singular and has no inverse. So if the determinant is anything other than zero, then it has an inverse. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. If it's not equal to zero, that means it has an inverse. That's something that 
confuses a lot of students. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. You are just looking to see if it's zero or not. If it's not zero, it has an inverse. If it is zero, then it has no inverse and is what we call a singular matrix. Now remember, this is only for square matrices. Okay, so let's look at a past exam question here. This is from the 2018 exam one. This is question one. So which one of the following matrices has a determinant of zero? So remembering that the determinant is equal to that first diagonal times together, take away that second diagonal. So AD take away BC. So that is zero, take away one, so negative one, so not A. So that is one, take away zero, one, so not B. So that is one times six, so six, take away negative three times by two, so six, that's negative six, so that six plus six, 12, no. So three times four is 12, take six times two is 12, that is zero. And just to confirm, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, take away 0, so that's negative 8. So yes, only D has a determinant equal to 0. Remember with the determinant, we go, we times those two together, then take away those two times together. All right, so that was 3 times 4 take away 2 times 6. Just for an example over here, 1 times 6, 6, take away negative 3 times by 2, which is negative 6. And remembering that minus a negative number gives you positive, that's why it's 12. Okay. 78% of the state got that one correct. Okay, so so if matrix A again, we've got A, B, C, D. The inverse of A is given by, so this is A to the negative 1. A to the negative 1 is equal to this fraction, 1 minus AD minus BC, well, what's that? That's the determinant. 1 over the determinant times by this new matrix. Now, notice in this new matrix, A and D have been swapped positions, and B and C have been times by negative 1. Okay? So, this works provided that, of course, the determinant doesn't equal to 1 because 1 divided by 0, yeah, that won't work. That won't give us something. Now, as I say, you need to be able to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 by hand. It's quite quick by hand. You can do it on your calculator as well, but you need to understand the process also. Anything bigger than a 2x2 two two will do on the um, CADS calculator. So just to show you the process here. Here I've got a 2x2 a two two matrix. I've just assigned it to a variable to make it a bit easier for myself. And then we've got a nice little built-in function, DET. Determine A gives you negative 10 because that's not zero 
that means that there's an, an inverse for a. Okay, so let's find that inverse. a negative 1. a to the negative 1. And yes, that's ended up us with some fractions, but if I um, go control equals to get me the approximate, I can get my decimals there. So let's do that or something similar on our CAS now. So let's yep, do the two by two. Uh, let's do the one from up here, three, six, two, four. Okay. And I'll assign that to a variable just because it makes it all a bit simpler. You know, for when I, I go ahead and, and do a lot of things with it, it means I don't have to type it all in again and again with matrices that can be a bit of a pain. So to find that function, you can type D E T and brackets variable B. And then enter, let's determine it. Or menu, matrix, determinant B. Okay, so that's that there. Now let's do one that will give us an inverse because you'll see if I go B to the negative one, singular matrix, it won't, we can't find the inverse for that one. All right, so let's do another one. Oh, let's do yeah, one of these other ones. One, two, one, two, three, six. Okay. And I'll store that to variable this time. I'll call it A. Okay. I'll just type that in. Determinant A. Okay, so that's telling me it's not zero, so there's an inverse. All right, so A to, to the negative one, enter. All right, so what it's done here is it's put it, it's times it into the matrix. We'll do an example which shows you how to do that, but get that as a decimal control enter there's a decimals all there all right so that's how you can do it on the CAS so let's do our worked example so I've got matrix A 4512 let's find the inverse first off double check if there is an inverse, so we've got to look for the determinant. Okay, so determine A is AD minus BC, so four times two, four times two, minus five times one. Okay, so that's where we get eight minus five and equals to three. So the determinant is not equal to zero, therefore A has an inverse. Okay, so here's my formula for the inverse. All right, so the determinant is three, so one over three. Now, one over three times by this matrix you can see A and D have been flipped and these two have been times by negative one. All right, I can leave it like that or I can times 
the fraction into the matrix. Now, sometimes it's good to leave it as a fraction because a fraction you know, can be the most exact way of writing it, especially when you have thirds. They're a bit yucky to write as decimals. Okay. So, matrix B. 2, 6, negative 3, 4. Find the inverse. So our determinant, remember, is AD minus BC. So 2 times 4 take away 6 times negative 3. So 6 times negative 3, remember, is negative 18. So minus negative 18, that's why I've got plus 18 there. So it's not equal to 0, the determinant is not equal to 0, that's why the inverse exists. And I end up with this inverse of 1 over 26, 4, negative 6, 3, 2. So you can see here the A and D have flipped, changed positions. And then here I've times negative 3 by negative 1. So negative 3 times by negative 1 gives you positive 3. And 6 times by negative 1 gives you negative 6. All right, here I've got matrix C, 3, 9, 2, 6, find the inverse. So our determinant is 3 times 6, take away 2 times 9, so it's 18 minus 18 is 0. So our determinant is 0, therefore the inverse does not exist. Okay, so matrix C is singular and does not have an inverse. Right, now some of you may have done that last year and so this should just be a bit of you know, reminding for you. So remembering that when you have a number or fraction in this case, you can times it into the matrix. So I could have written this as so it's 4 on 26, negative 20, negative 6 on 26, 3 on 26, 2 on 26, and then I probably would have simplified those that fraction as 2 on 13, negative 3 on 13. Uh, don't think I can simplify that one. 3 on 26 and 1 on 13. So, yes, that's what that could have looked like, that one. Now, what I want you to really take out of this section is understanding when an inverse exists. Okay, how to find an inverse for a two by two by hand and when an inverse exists. So understanding the determinant. So as I say, you need to be able to do the um, inverse and determinant for a two by two by hand, otherwise, we can do it on our CAS calculator.